I love science fiction films. I love to see how creative people imagine a future that is very different from our world. In 1919, one creative writer imagined cars would very soon become obsolete. The aircraft had just been invented, and we would all use this to fly to work. So, on top of the skyscrapers in New York, he invented a structure that we could use to fly to our offices. Now, we're not going to work like this, but still in 100 years of aviation we've reached a lot. We've come from wooden aircraft to airframes made of advanced composite materials. We've come from navigating by the stars to the use of complex algorithms to guide our way. We even cut down flight times for intercontinental flights from days to last only hours. But still, with all these advances in the aircraft, why hasn't the airport been changed? Now, you may think, I never thought about that. Why do you need to change? If it isn't broken, don't fix it. Well, our airport system does not meet our future demands. Already when you travel to an airport now, you see on busy days it is extremely crowded. And this will only get worse. Aviation doubles every 15 years. Which means that in 2030, there will be twice the number of people traveling on twice the number of planes, traveling twice the distance as they do today. And in 2050, it means there will be three or four times as many as today. This also puts an enormous pressure on our environment. We have subscribed to the Sustainable Mobility Goals of the Paris Agreement, which means that the impact of aviation will, has to re will have to reduce, despite the fact that it grows. Concrete, it means, for example, that the CO2 emissions will have to be reduced with 75% in the year 2050. This will not work with our current straight runways. And then we have the problem of the weather. In stormy wind conditions, aircraft have problems with landing. And you probably think, I'm happy I was not on board this aircraft. I know I am. Still, pilots are trained for these situations, but this aircraft has to circle around a couple of times before being able to make a landing, which means delay, extra fuel burn. And not only for this aircraft, but for all the ones to follow as well. Then, why in a hundred years the airports have not changed? We need an innovation in airports. We need a breakthrough. This is what we have designed. This airport design was made by me and my team at the Netherlands Aerospace Center, together with a team of experts from all over Europe and the European Commission. It is a large circumventing runway, which uh, offers a possibility to put the buildings in the middle. The diameter of the runway is three and a half kilometers, meaning this runway is 11 kilometers long. Now, here's how it works. The aircraft flies straight in until at the last moment it aligns its structure with the size of the runway. The sides are banked, as you can see, which means the aircraft will stay on the surface, just like you see on highways or on rail tracks. The aircraft does not circle around a couple of times before coming to a full stop. It will only require the use of about one quarter of the runway for landing. This means you will not feel like you're in a roller coaster. Uh, and just as well, it means 
uh, we can have three aircraft simultaneously on the runway while still including safety margins for any possible error. This runway offers the possibility to fly in from different directions. So, if you make a landing, you do not have to circle around anymore before lining up to the runway. It also means for taking off, you do not have to wait in a long queue, but you can enter anywhere you would like. And just as well, as the buildings are in the middle, the taxi times from the gate to the runway is much shorter than it is today. Now, you may think, you said 11 kilometers of runway, that is quite a lot. And it is quite a lot. But if you compare this, compare our airport with the current airport of Paris, and this is Paris Charles de Gaulle, you see that our runway only requires about half of the size of the current airfields. You may think, okay, this is nice, uh, but it's a big airport. Can you live up to the standard of this airport? If you depict it on this airport, does this really work? Or is this science fiction? And that's what we've tried to find out as well. We have modeled the airport of Paris Charles de Gaulle, which is one of the busiest airports in Europe. We have taken the busiest day of the year, that is one day in July, and we took all the traffic that occurred on that day and depicted it on a computer model that we made from the endless runway. We put our system to the test and we found it works. Our research shows air traffic controllers are capable of managing multiple aircraft on the runway. And it also shows air traffic controllers are capable of managing traffic coming from different directions. We also measured reductions in emissions, because aircraft can now fly straight in, or if they fly out, straight out. And very important, this runway is much less depending on the weather. If the wind is blowing too strong from a certain direction, this runway only faces partial closure meaning we have a sustainable capacity all year long. Now, you may think, does this affect me as a passenger? It will. It will also affect the pilots. They will need additional training. It will affect engineers. We need to redesign landing gears. We need to look what happens with the tires. You may also think this is a crazy idea. Well, the video was posted on Facebook for this endless runway, and I never imagined it would go viral in just two or three days. And up to today, over 50 million people have seen the video of the endless runway. I'm totally amazed by that. And I only hope that this crazy idea inspires you to also keep an open mind in science and to keep innovating. Let's realize our dream for an endless runway and for a new generation of airports and move from science fiction to science fact. Thank you. <laughs>